Hello all you YouTubers out there and welcome to another little tutorial brought to you by Pedro Fernandez from Arc9.com. And today what I'm going to be presenting is something um, a little different but also very important to, to creating a visual and that's about depth and values. And as you can see on screen I've got a little of the work that's been completed over time for, for various studios and various artists. And what I'll be doing is actually talking about an image that I myself am not too happy with. It was done quite a while ago, it was done two years ago, but I decided it'd be interesting to actually look at it and just try and reconfigure it and show you exactly how to apply some depth into this image. At the moment, as you can see, I, I find it quite flat and I find that I would do things quite a bit differently. But at the time, then again, I didn't know as well and I just went for it. Although I still like the composition quite a bit. So stay tuned in and um, let's just get to it. Now, one of the main things I usually like to do is gather some photo reference. And you don't need many photo reference. You probably just need one, two, three, whatever. But the thing is, you get the ones that inspire you and that you really like. And I've actually only gathered one that I kind of saw and I thought, oh, that could be quite interesting. I probably won't go that far, but it's a reference for something. And it's uh, here on the left. And it's something that will, is kind of in my head and it's telling me, okay, you've got all these ideas that would match up quite well with this render. And one of the main things to, to look out for is actually the depth in these images. And as you can see, there's a clear, nice separation between each layer. I'll, I'll apply a black and white layer and you can just go here down on the right and just black and white and that will kind of black and white it and you can see just how beautiful this um, depth progression and values are in this image I, w I would probably even brighten this up a little bit more to make it a center point and look at just how contrasty these are these trees right in the foreground and as we go back right on the side and you see that's much back that's much further back sorry you can see just how just how much atmosphere there is there and that's bringing out the front tree because it's kind of silhouetting and it's making for some fantastic uh, depth progression in the image now you see this one on the right and that's quite faded out and I'll bring that into I'll bring that in so we can pay a little attention to it and as you can see I mean this is the raw render of this image and the rest is being just uh, photoshopped on top and what happens is uh, you can see that there's a depth progression in the one below that you don't get in this one I mean render engines are fantastic but they don't pop out images by themselves you really just have to get creative and think about it as a painting and not so much as something inorganic that is quite rigid and tough you have to think of a render as a tool that you're using to create your vision and that's the way you should look at it okay so now let's go into our render and take this out and look at our render and the first thing I've done I mean this again this is only what I had at the time so this is only an old render of, of something I did and I'm not too happy with it at the moment but it's something that I had at the time and these are the tools that I had at my access and to my knowledge so what I've done is actually um, just bring that out I mean I haven't got too many passes I've just inserted a sky just googled it around I'll even show you what it is so yeah basically now let's let's start getting the depth right and I mean that's probably one of the first things I want to look at and again if you notice um, in this uh, in this image just below you'll see that um, probably not so much in this one but you'll see that the uh, the fog is kind of heavier and denser towards the base of the tree so let's work on that because our Z depth is kind of quite uh, uniform if you if you have a look at it it's it's quite uniform and it doesn't get actually heavier as as you are below so one of the first things I want to do is actually control L and just correct the Z depth itself so I'll, I'll actually control I because I want to invert that and I'll just create that I'll just kind of get it to a point where it's good to be working at 16 bits I'm not but it's it's really good practice if you can and let's bring out a render so like so and let's just transport that across so I'll copy so I'll hold and I'll drag it down I'll put it into passes so let's look at passes let's get rid of that and again I'm doing this in real time so if you hear me talking to myself yeah don't don't worry I haven't gone crazy okay so wow I put that to screen and it's gone crazy but let's do something let's create a channel 
Let's create a, a mask, sorry. Let's invert that mask, control A. Let's bring up uh, our brushes and let's choose a nice soft brush. Again, I, I, a brush is, is one of those things. People think that they're magic and they're going to create everything. They're not. <laughs> brushes are just another tool and they're just another way of using it. I kind of use the John as the Row brushes. For a long time, I'd, I'd been using other brushes and I thought, oh wow, this is fantastic and I have to have every single brush. No, I don't have to have every single brush. I kind of use only five of them. So I don't really need every single brush there is out there. And I'm just painting into that mask ever so softly to where I think there would be a, a bit more of depth. So. I'm just painting ever so softly. I'm going to continue. I'm going to pause and continue. Okay, so I've built it up as we've gone along ever so slightly. And I've got the Z-Depth once again. And there's another little neat trick we can do. We can actually vignette it. So if we set that to multiply, uh, we can actually vignette our, our scene. Already you see the, the amount of depth we got in there. And we haven't even done anything. So, okay, let's just start just painting that out and just nice wide brush strokes. And again, I don't want this so much. Uh, I just want to kind of vignette like that. I can even just control L and just bring out the vignette to where I like. So if I want it more towards the edges, the strong edges, I can do that. And there we go. So again, it's already, it's already starting to look quite interesting. And already I'm starting to get ideas, I can see I can see how we can brighten this up around here. I can see how we can brighten other types of things, this rock. Again, I don't have my selections on this, so it's quite difficult. But another thing I've done is I've kind of just color balanced ever so slightly this fog. And I'll kind of just do that again. Oh, wait a minute. Let's look at that. That's quite interesting. That's quite interesting. Let's maintain that. See, there's. There's always this uh, type of um, happy coincidences that may happen a long time where you just kind of error and it, it looks quite cool. I mean, I'll probably not get into that at the moment, but I mean, it's already starting to come through. I can see here that we need to build up a little more uh, fogginess around, around here maybe, and maybe just get rid of this tree or try and add some other tree. So I'm going to look for some references and insert it into that and we'll come back to that. Now what I've done is actually just run through uh, the whole process and I've kind of already done this image. I don't want to show you yet, but I just want to show you uh, the process that's happened and how things have gone along. So just catching up with what stage we were at. So I was inserting the 2D elements and again, I've just uh, grabbed some trees uh, from uh, CG textures and also from Gobo Tree. Uh, so that they're fantastic uh, resources. So I'll just show you very quickly a Gobo Tree and CG textures. And Gobo Tree is actually run by the Vionics guys. And as many of you may know, their, their work is incredible and I'm quite a big fan of it. So basically I've just inserted these trees. Uh, I've, I've only really just kind of done a little trick to them, which really, um, if, you, if you see and if you've looked at it, uh, they came out quite sharp. So I've kind of just chosen the blur, blur tool and I've just, um, just blurred them a little bit. And as you can see, I mean, it's still quite sharp in certain areas. So, sorry, I was just painting on there. So yeah. So I'm just blurring that a little bit. And okay, so let's close that. And as you can see, I've kind of just been starting to build up this depth and I've corrected it a little bit as I think it was too over the top. And one of the great things about visualization is that uh, there's, there's no exact science to it. And what does that mean? Yeah, there's no exact process. I mean, just because one company does it this way or one artist does it that way, that's not exactly the correct way. Just do what what functions for you. Have a look at your references again. Always go back and see your references and just look and see what you have and just try to work with what you think works for yourself. There's no exact science to this and it's also important to keep looking back on your references as I, I kind of want to see what's happening with it and you know how things are coming along. So let's just hide that 
And again, I like to keep my grade to the end. So I'm just working up depth. I'm just working up the image thing as I go along. And I've selected the glass, just the balustrade. And I think that was just too dark. So what I've done is actually just lightened it up a little bit and kind of faked a bit of reflection. I could put in a bit of reflection, but I'm just trying to do this, uh, I guess, in a quicker manner. And there we go, a little more glass. And I can probably even paint this. So I can just grab a brush, create a layer, and just paint that out. Assuming, yeah, that I have that. So let's just put that. So I can just kind of, yeah, just paint onto that. And that's kind of faking a bit of a reflection, really. And that's just a bit of a reflection. So as we go along and go upwards, uh, our depth has also been corrected a little bit. And I've actually added just a little more depth and even some sun rays just coming in. And that's basically just creating a layer and just adding to it, uh, just painting it in. And I've kind of just masked out this rock because I thought it, it would look quite cool and it's giving depth. And one of the great guys that really does this well in his photography, and I'll show you the example. And once you understand the example of silhouetting and depth, you'll understand the whole thing and how this works. So give me just one sec. So I've just found his Flickr account, and this is Bath, Nicholas Bouvier, and I'm a huge fan of his photography. And I learned this through a friend called Carlos, who's also a visualizer. And again, it's just amazing, the stuff. And you just see how the silhouettes and the strong silhouettes uh, they really bring out the people and add to create depth. So getting rid of that, uh, as you can see, I've kind of uh, done that with the trees. And I'll show you exactly how I've done that very easily. So I'll, I'll roughly select. And um, that's that's actually one of our render passes. And um, again, I would use, you know, more correct render passes, a white color or something that's uh, a little more uh, correct, if you could say that, and that masks a little better. But the important thing here is actually just knowing that you know, I'm working with an old project and I'm trying to see what I can do. And this is to show you that at the time I didn't have that much knowledge of it. And I'm not saying I do now, but it's to show you that this process is quite easy and it's just training your eye. And I'm, as you can see, I'm kind of bringing out that tree a little more now. And just a nice soft brush again, just rubbing out and just nice soft and just going into it. And that tree is coming out a little more. Ideally, I'd probably make it a little darker. So let's go up in this uh, tree, if we could call it that. And I've just set a layer to overlay. And that's basically just to uh, spotlight it and just bring out a little more of that uh, burn. Uh, and one of the great ways to actually look at this is uh, through a black and white filter. So as you can see, I'll show you where I've burnt it. And you can see I've started to bring out this detail. And I've used also this uh, total lighting pass set to overlay. So that's really brought it out. Because again, what's closer to us has bigger, richer, darker contrasts. And what's further away kind of gets uh, muddled up in the glare and the, the and just basically uh, the values So and the atmosphere itself. So. I mean, these are quite nice to show how depth works and black and white is amazing in that. And it's just look at that. That's so beautiful. And you can see the contrast and you can see just exactly how the light is reflecting and you can see the Fresnel effect. It's it's amazing. Have a look at it if you can. They're really inspiring and you'll certainly want to do a lot of visuals based on, based on this. So basically, yeah, let's keep going up. And uh, one of the things I've done is also a spotlight. Now at this stage, I kind of want to get a grade on it. So I basically just uh, pay no attention to these ones because the important ones is like two or three. And I've just set a hue saturation layer, to soft light, and you can see the values there. And basically just uh, brought down the saturation a little bit. Just thought it was a bit over the top and just taking out a little bit from the, from the, the, the windows and just giving it a bit of color balance and just warmth really that I don't really like in the windows that much so I'm just gonna kind of brush that out and make it nice and cool and if we look at our ref once again it's not 100% close <laughs> but I mean it's probably a little greener and I could certainly bring out a little green but I think this is functioning quite well and I don't really want to go into this uh, kind of bluish moods so, I mean, it's, again, it's an interpretation of, uh, of what you see. Uh, 
a visual is not a photograph and as much as you want it to be a photograph and uh, we can we can make photographs to tell you the truth but it's an interpretation of reality an interpretation of reality always has the aspect that it doesn't have to be fixed because that's a reference it has to be like that so let's get rid of that and let's build ourselves up and go along the way so basically we've got our spotlight just to kind of bring that light in we've got a bit more of the glare effect just basically paint it on with a soft brush and just some very simple uh, just some shafts if you can call it that these are very simple painted on I've just kind of drawn these and just painted on it I'm going to show you so then I can just kind of go into this and paint it and I can even just blur that out a little bit so I can even come and just uh, motion blur it and yep and that's it and what I did other than that after we have that is just uh, get our kind of camera correction uh, sharpen it a little bit so I've kind of just uh, sharpened and sharp mask it's gonna over sharpen now but this is what I've done and basically just come into our lens correction and I, I again you know the masters of this is uh, Bertrand and and Peter they're probably the great guys that do this but I'm I mean I, I kind of do it. they'll probably explain it better but what I do is kind of look at it as um, as when I think it's correct and uh, basically that these are more or less the values I used and that's the effect I got uh, another quick one that I did was actually just uh, I mean I just added a bit of tilt shift to it and just blurred it a little bit at the bottom and also I kind of just straighten it up so I control T and just stretched it out a little bit and just set it to distort right click and distort and just kind of correct it up a little bit of the verticals I had no idea how to do this when I in the camera when I created this uh, a couple years back but now I do and anyway it's what I have to work with so basically um, that's 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 it and I, I mean I'm going to quickly just uh, I'll probably just try and get rid of this very quickly uh, yeah I guess we can do that <laughs> a bit of faking but it's kind of just it was distracting so I wanted to get rid of it and and there we go and again you'll see that I look at the pictures generally from a point of view of um, of, of, a, of a thumbnail and you can see even if I flip it and give you a kind of a new a new point of view on it it really does come um, to life the building and I think it's it's much better than the other one and I'll just get the other one to compare so I've got the other one I've just loaded it in and so let's have a look and yeah definitely reads much better let's just have a look at this in black and white so I can show you the difference and I'll kind of just enlarge in this and I'll maintain the proportions so again it's kind of blurry just because it's a small preview so let's look at it like that uh, just as a thumbnail and yeah what a difference hey and this is going to look again it's going to look probably a little too much a little too far and I've exaggerated it quite a little and it could have done probably with a little more correcting and probably even bring out this a little more but again it's uh, you can see just how different it is uh, flat life flat life and that's basically all for today and um, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, tutorial again I look forward to your suggestions and your comments and um, yeah I should be making these passes available so stay tuned to that I think I'll put them up as soon as I can put up the video and also have some space where it can handle some downloading so thank you very much for watching this tutorial and I hope you've learned a little about how to insert some depth and create values in your piece and separate different elements and just goes to show you know you don't need to paint in everything and have all these 2d elements you can work with what you have and really it's just about looking at it and experimenting so thank you very much uh, from Pedro Fernandez at rp9.com and hope to see you soon and show you a few more tricks and tips thank you